Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. We are getting into uh, the Cold War, of post-World War II time. Uh, and the first word we have is an organization that is still with us today, uh, the United Nations. And, of course, it is designed to promote peace originally, which it has not been very successful at doing, but it has been successful in other uh, regions, such as providing uh, disaster relief and, and relief for hunger uh, and things like that. Uh, its main goal, though, is to have a place where people can actually talk out their differences uh, and hopefully uh, avoid conflict uh, and sort of form a consensus of what the rest of the countries of the world think. Satellite Nation. So, what you see here is this little dividing line, this green line, which is dividing. And over here is what we would call the West, uh, or what we'll learn is going to be most of those countries are going to be part of what we call NATO, which was coming up in, in, in a little bit. And we see all the countries in this area that are surrounding the Soviet Union, sort of providing like a buffer zone. Um, these are what are called satellite nations, um, and they satellite nations because they extend past the, the the Soviet Union itself. And again, they serve as a buffer, uh, but also most of those are part of what's called the Warsaw Pact. Uh, and the Warsaw Pact is uh, Warsaw being the capital of Poland. Uh, you can see it right there. Uh, Warsaw being the capital of Poland um, was to counter NATO as a military uh, organization uh, in order to protect the Soviet interests. So containment, this was our strategy um, of preventing communism from spreading. Now, if communism already existed in some places, which it already did, then that's fine. We're not going to necessarily try and you know force it out and you know defeat the communist regimes. But what we are going to do is help other countries resist communism. As you can see here, the Russian bear, as they call it, and see it's spreading influence to. You know, there's all sorts of places: Afghanistan, Africa, there's Syria, all these places. And you see the opposite. Uh, here in the United States, you know, gearing down, you know, against the USSR. So the idea, again, was to influence countries, uh, either financially or perhaps even militarily, uh, say, hey, we're better choice than it is to go with the Soviet Union. We're better economically, militarily, your individual rights, that quality of life is just better all around. And again, the idea was let's stop it from spreading. If it already exists in some places, so be it but we're not going to let it spread to other places. The Iron Curtain. Um, this is literally uh, not a wall, but it was a dividing line. And so it wasn't a physical wall, although there were physical walls in some places, particularly around Berlin. And we get to the division of Berlin. That'll be very, very interesting. But the Iron Curtain refers to this sort of imaginary line that keeps, again, on this side is the Western democracies. And on this side uh, is, you know, Soviet-controlled uh, communist states. And you see Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, um, you know, all, all these sorts of things there. And on the other side, Austria, France, Germany, Switzerland, uh, etc. Cold War. Well, this is a state of hostility between the Soviet Union and the United States, but without military action. There's no direct fighting between the two. Uh, it's more through influence, and that's why it was called Cold War. We'll support each other's enemies, and we won't exactly fight each other face-to-face, -face, but we will have uh, the countries that we support uh, fight each other, and we'll try to undermine everyone, each other, rather, at um, any opportunity. Truman Doctrine. And so the Truman Doctrine, the goal of this, again, is to contain communism, to protect Turkey and Greece, oops, there's Greece, uh, from communism. And the reason why, they were kind of particularly uh, vulnerable, uh, particularly after the World War II, that perhaps they could fall to communism. And so this is the U.S. policy of sending aid to any nation trying to prevent a communist takeover. And th in this case, it was specific to Turkey and to Greece, but we would, as you can see, we'd expand that eventually uh, and, and help any country. The Marshall Plan. This is amazing, amazing plan. Uh, by George, suggested by George Marshall, who was the uh, chief of staff of the Army, uh, gave economic aid to rebuild all of post-war Western Europe. The United States offered to give money to build uh, Eastern Europe, but the Soviet Union 
would or prevented these other Eastern European countries from accepting the money. So you can see that much of Western Europe was was rebuilt uh, with, with with U.S. money, uh, and that's part of the reason why there's such a strong. Um, I guess, friendship between Western Europe and the United States. And of course, we disagree on, on, on things. But in general, um, you know, our, our, our big goals typically have been the same for uh, ever since the end of the Cold War. Now, these days, it perhaps are shifting a little bit. Um, but it's hard to imagine that this sort of alliance, which has lasted for 60 plus years, would be uh, torn apart. Berlin Airlift. So this is when Berlin was actually divided, um, and West Berlin was, you know, the the part that was controlled by the Allies, and East Berlin was the part that was controlled by the Soviets. And uh, long story short, um, Berlin is like a hundred miles inside of East German territory, and so you couldn't just drive there. I mean, they could easily, and they did in this case. The uh, East German government closed the land borders. So you have West Berlin, which is just all stuck by itself and no way to get to any supplies. So the Americans and the British landed planes literally every two minutes uh, just to keep uh, West Berlin supplied. And, you know, could the Soviets have you know, shot them down? Well, perhaps, but that certainly would have been a major, major, major escalation. That definitely would have led to another war. So uh, eventually the Soviets backed off and they allowed the, the road access to Berlin uh, to be open. Then we had NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and you can see uh, all the uh, countries here. And this, of course, is the defensive military alliance, the United States, Canada, and of course other Europe, other European nations. And the expansion of these, as you can see, this is the, this is the former Soviet Union, Russia. They're getting creeping closer and closer and closer and closer. And so Russia is not very happy about that. All right, that's it for today. Thank you.